Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we're going to have a quick crash course on the matplotlib plotting library for Python. Matplotlib is often referred to as the standard Python visualization library for data science and machine learning. Keep in mind that both Seaborn and Pandas built-in plotting functionality are built using matplotlib library. So that means if later on you decide that you really just want to focus on using something like Seaborn for visualization because it has a simpler syntax, you'll still be able to make matplotlib calls that directly connect with Seaborn because a lot of these other visualization libraries are built using matplotlib. So we're going to be using matplotlib throughout the course for just very basic plot types. Think of things like just plotting a simple line to see how our training performed. In this lecture, we're going to learn just a few of those simple plots. If you want to learn more and get a more in-depth look at what matplotlib is capable of, make sure to visit the official online documentation at matplotlib.org. All right, let's head over to a Jupyter Notebook and just go over a few of the basic topics for matplotlib. Okay, here we are at a notebook where I've already imported NumPy as NP and Pandas as PD. Next, what I'm going to do is show you how to import matplotlib for plotting purposes, which is import matplotlib, and then you have to say dot pyplot, and then import it as PLT. So keep in mind, sometimes people forget this dot pyplot, go ahead and add that in. Next, what I'm going to show you is just how to simply plot an X array versus a Y array. So for example, let's say I had these three points on the X axis, 0, 1, and 2. And on the Y axis, essentially I wanted to plot 100, 200, and 300. And what I want to do is just do a very simple line plot of each X and Y pair. What I can do is say plt.plot, and then say X comma Y. And this is essentially the most basic line plot possible. We just have our X points, 0, 1, and 2, and then we have the 100, 200, 300. And by default, matplotlib will go ahead and just do a line plot. Now, if you're running this in Jupyter Notebook, and for some reason, you only saw maybe a single output, but you didn't actually see the image, for older versions of Jupyter Notebook, what you need to do is add in this magic command just somewhere at the top of your notebook and then run it. What you need to do is say matplotlib space inline. And you do this with a percent sign. So this is if you are using a notebook and for some reason you don't see the image. The latest version of Jupyter Notebook should show the images, but just in case it didn't, you can go ahead and run what's known as a magic command in Jupyter, which starts with this percent sign, which is just matplotlib inline. And then if you rerun plt.plot, you should be able to see this. Now, if you're running this as a .py script, what you need to do is right after the plt.plot, run plt.show, open and close parentheses. You'll notice that when I ran plt.show, I no longer see that little output of the line. So keep that in mind. If you're running this as a .py script, you need to add in plt.show. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is just show you just a couple of basic tools for just quick basic plots. I'm going to copy and paste a data frame that we have in the lecture notebook. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. This is from the lecture notebook on matplotlib, which really quickly creates a housing data frame for us. This is typical of maybe what we're gonna see throughout the course, something like a feature, like the number of rooms versus the price. So what I wanna do here is do some sort of scatter plot of the rooms versus the price. So one way I can do that is by simply saying plt, and for a simple scatter plot, I can call plt.scatter, pass in rooms, and you'll notice with plt.scatter, if I do shift tab here, it takes in what you want on the x-axis first, and then what you want on the y-axis. So we'll say plt scatter housing rooms, and then housing price. So we pass in those two series, and then matplotlib will go ahead and plot this out as a scatter plot for this. Now, if you accidentally just did plt plot, what's gonna happen is it's going to automatically think it's a line plot. So just keep that in mind. In this particular case, we wanted that scatter. So we'll go ahead and say plt scatter. So there's a couple of things we can do for style calls here. You'll notice that if I recall plt.plot x comma y and run this, my axis starts a little bit before zero here at the edge. And also there's no labels or titles. So let's first show you how to add in labels and titles. For a title at the top of your plot, we're gonna say plt.title. To label your axes, we can say plt_x label for the x axis label, and then you just pass in whatever string you want. 
And then for the Y label, you say plt.y label and pass in, again, whatever string you want. So then when I rerun this, I can see here title, Y label, and X label. And if for some reason you don't want to see this output, you can just add a semicolon at the very end of your last matplotlib command, run that, and it will go ahead and remove from the Jupyter Notebook that little output and just show you the image. Now, another question I get from students is how do I actually affect the axes limits? Notice here, it looks like the line stops a little short. It might be nice if we just cut off the plot at, from zero to two on the X axis instead of extending past it a little bit. For that, what I can do is after I call plt.plot, I will add in a command xlim, and then for this, I set my lower limit, such as zero, and then my upper limit, such as two. So notice right now, it goes before zero and after two, but if I run this with my new x limits, rerun that cell, you'll notice now it starts at exactly zero and it goes to exactly two. And I can actually do the same for my y axis. I can say y lim, and really I can set this to whatever I want. So maybe I could set this starting at zero and then go all the way to 300. And notice now the y limit on the y axis actually starts at zero. So keep that in mind. I can add titles and labels with these three commands and I can set my limits with these two commands. Last, what I can do is add in colors and markers. We won't really mess around with this too much in matplotlib. Instead, we'll be using Seaborn for something like this. But if you wanted to change the color, you can say color is equal to, and then you can pass in any main color string, such as red and all lowercase, run that, and it will change the color. If you're looking for a more particular color, what you can do is if you Google search hex color picker, what happens is you get the ability to then kind of choose whatever color you want here and then it'll return back this hex code. Then you can just go ahead and copy that and then paste that in as your color. And then when you run that, you'll notice now you're able to do essentially any color you want. The other thing to note here is that you can decide on a marker to mark each of the points. And you can check out the matplotlib documentation for what markers are options. We can do a lowercase o to see a little dot there, or you can do something like an asterisk or an asterisk, if we run that, we can see a little star. So there's lots of different marker options. If you wanna make them a little larger, you can say marker size is equal to, and then just kind of choose an integer size. So for example, if I wanted to make them really large, I could say marker size 15, and they'll should be 15 times larger than average or by default. And then we can also affect things like line style. And for example, I can pass in two dashes there for a string code and that gives me back a dashed line. So for these sort of things, as far as what string options are available to us or what parameter calls are available, um, if you do shift tab here, you'll notice it actually doesn't tell you. Instead, what you have to do is you have to kind of go through these examples here and it'll eventually talk about things like line width, marker size, line style, et cetera. And you'll notice this is a extremely long documentation string because it has all the options available for you here. So notice it has kind of all the styles, line thickness, et cetera, all there for you. So you can check that out in the doc string or just go to the documentation. As far as this lecture is concerned, the main thing you should know how to do is just a very simple scatter plot or a very simple line plot. That's essentially all we're really gonna be using matplotlib for. Later on in the course, we may be doing a couple of things like editing X limits and Y limits for other plots, but really this is all we need to know about matplotlib for the rest of the course. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next lecture where we discuss the basics of the Seaborn plotting library.